Cindy Harrison and thank you for joining me on this YouTube channel for my project, The Rainbow Troll. So if you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. Make a comment below, even if it's just to say hi, I will get back to you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any other projects. So, enjoy. Okay, here's my rainbow troll for Throwback Thursday. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to paint this little guy. First, I start with the white canvas, and this is a um, 12 by 12. And I'm going to put a coat of white paint over it. I know it's gessoed, but we're going to put a coat of white paint over it. The white paint can be diluted a little bit with water. And I'm also going to, I'm going to use my my moon brush. My, it's a filbert, moon filbert. Have some little water in your surf on your surface or in your brush and keep it loose and wet. And I keep going over the same areas just to make sure that it doesn't dry out on me before I get a chance to do the next step. Loose and wet. Now we're going to, on the dirty brush, don't wash your brush out, go in and pick up just ever so a little bit of the black. I'm going to wipe that off on my paper towel so I just have a little bit left and I'm going to start to create some streaks and just keep going over them till you blend them down to where it looks like smoke in the background. If it gets too dark, you can pick up white. Ooh. Got a little dark there, so I'm gonna pick up some white and just go right over that, blend it in until it fades away. Nice and smoky. And although I'm going horizontal, I'm not, you know, it, it's curved, it's di directional, it's not a straight line. I'm not looking to build a house. I just want some idea of movement back in the ground, in the background. I just want some idea of movement in the background. I'm going to dry that. I'm going to transfer on my pattern. Of course, put all the colors out. Black plum, Victorian blue, Hauser medium green, golden straw, cad orange, and then cad red. Put a puddle of all of those out and then come back. I'm going to use my number four round. And I'm going to turn my piece upside down. I want to pre-wet his hair area. Make sure your brush is clean with some water and just put it over. You can put it over the top of his head and bring it up a couple of sections. Then I'm going to start having a load of black plum and press down and start wiggle some of that color up. You don't want to go up too far. And you don't want to make them all the same length. And as the water starts to dissipate, you can start adding some more lines that are actually more solid. They won't spread out. This is good. Go over the ones you just put on. I'm 
then what I'm going to do is change colors. Now I'm going to change colors. I'll wash my brush out, put my brush into the next value color, which is blue, and then tip it into the darker color, the color I just put on. Start about, if you start too far down, your blue will come in sooner, but that might not be a bad thing, so let's start and try it. Push it down, bring it up, push it down, bring it up, and then you'll start seeing, you can re-tip into the purple, the black plum, and you can start seeing some of that blue coming through. So wash your brush out when you want to reload. Pick up some blue, tip it in the black plum. So then now when we get to this point where we're just going to put the blue you can load your brush with the green and tip it in the blue and then start above the black plum line you can bring it up you can bring it down but you want to get some of that blue in there Don't try don't do the straight line like I just did. And I'm starting above the black plum with this blue. And I'm twisting my brush as I do it also. And that's giving me a little bit more wave. So now I'm going to go in and pick up the green and start to put some of that in. Now if your water dried out, you didn't go up this far, you have to blow dry it first and then put some water. bring some blue into the green, the green into the blue. The green should not go down as far as into the purple. I'm going to pick up some more black plum now that this is dry and just bring up a few darker hairs. And if I pick up some blue on the way it's okay. And you can go outside the line over here make it look a little bit more crazy to go beyond the line. Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to blow dry this. I'm going to pre-wet. Pre Start by loading your brush with the yellow and tipping it in the green and then you can start halfway up the green and create your next value change. Wash the brush off, load it in yellow, tip it in green. Now I'm going just to the straight yellow. It's very damp and it's bleeding out and that's okay. We have that soft gradation of color. Now I'm going to take my brush, load it in the orange, and tip it in the yellow. And start halfway up the yellow.
wash my brush out. Just pick up some straight orange. Wash my brush out, pick up the red. Tip it in the orange. Start halfway up the orange and put the red. I'll wash my brush out and go into the straight red. And then I'm going to take my brush, load it with the red, and tip it in the black plum. And I'm going to pull halfway up the red off the surface. And I'm going to be very careful and sparing with this color. I'm going to turn my piece so I have a little bit more softer landing. If you want to pull down, you can be sparing with that color. You need to wipe it off before you go to your surface. Remember, load with red, tip it in the black plum, and bring some of that down. That's enough. I'm putting some more red. I'm going to put some more orange. Add some more yellow. Because now after it dries, you can get a little bit bolder with the color. Yellow tipped in green. straight green so you're filling in some of the white areas I'm going to pick up some blue too dark, just add some water. Now I'm going to take the blue, tip it in the purple. Wash my brush out and go back to the black plum. So I'm going to blow dry that. If you have any areas that don't have color on it and you would like color on it, go ahead and pick up whatever color you feel should be there. I want some yellow. So I'm just going to put some yellow right in that area. A couple of those areas. If you have too much blue, a cluster of blue, and you want to break it up, just add some of the either the green or the black plum. Where his hairline is, I'm going to take my three quarter inch wash brush and load it with a side load of the black plum and go right on top of my line drawing if you go too far down just wipe it off
and that creates a base for his head. We may need to darken that later or not. Maybe it's fine just the way it is. I'm going to outline his features with burnt sienna using my number one Dresden liner. So I don't have to outline the ears. I'm just going to outline the eyes. And it's lightly. I want it to show up when I do the base coat. We're not perfect circles. I'm noticing one eyebrow is thicker than the others. You can correct that on your line drawing or you could just leave it as it is. And it could be because I put the hair down too far. I'm going to blow dry this and erase your lines. Any lines that are showing around your eyes. Don't erase your ear lines. Okay. Now I'm going to base coat his whole head with flesh tone. I still have the old bottle. It's now called Warm Beige. You can do it with the one inch moon filbert or your flat brush, whichever you prefer. I'm going to put a second coat of this color and probably even a third because it's very see-through. I want to see my burnt sienna lines, but I don't want him to look dirty. So that was about three coats of the flesh tone also known as warm beige and it's still kind of see-through I definitely see my lines and this is a good thing so I don't have to retrace my line drawing now I'm going to do some shading with the burnt sienna and I'm going to use my number 12 flat I'm going to start on the inside and work my way out of the design. So on the inside we're going to have a float of color from his tear duct around the outer part not the pupil which is black not the iris which is going to be burnt sienna but on the next round and it's going to be on both sides so start on the inside. I'm going to start and bring it down and then start there and bring it around. And it's thin. You don't want to make it so wide that it it's going to touch the burnt sienna part. The burnt sienna part, if you take your four round and a little bit of moisture in your brush you can just go around that iris with the burnt sienna 
If you did the whole inside, it wouldn't matter. You're going to put black in there anyway. Now I'm going to go around the outside of the same area we just did. So it's like a back to back. This can be a little wider. Now I'm going to go over and repeat what I just did on this side. Now that this side is dry, I'm going to go over his iris again. I'm going to take a side load and I'm going to come down the inside line. So I'm going to start where that burnt sienna line stopped on a chisel and then flatten it out and bring it around and right down to the bottom. If you want to mop that out, you can mop that out. And while that's drying, let's go and deepen this iris. Take your watery brush and put that line in here. Tap it out. We're also going to have this line down the center. While that's drying, I'm going to come back over to this side. I'm actually going to use my three quarter inch wash brush side loaded with the burnt sienna and I'm going to start I'm going to start against the head and bring it right down between the head and the ear and then turn it around and and then start at the top of the ear and bring it down so it's a back to back on that line. We're going to do the same on this side. And if it's light to begin with, that's fine. We can go back over it and darken it later. Let's do this eyebrow area. I'm going to do the inside top of the ear. and the outside of this side of the ear. Make sure 
this is dry. Okay, if this area is dry, I'm going to do the inside. So you pick up where you left off on the inside and you go this way. Now I want to, I'm going to deepen around the outside of his eye. a little liney so I'm going to pick up a little bit more moisture right here I want to make it a little softer on the outside edge you don't want any of the flesh down color showing through between the two side loads There's this little indentation between his eyes. I'm going to take my 12 flat in the burnt sienna and start right in there and then bring it up away. And end it at the top of his head on this side. I'm going to tip it and end it at the top of his head on this side. Now we have to let that dry before we can go and deepen it. I'm going to go back to these areas and deepen those and this time I'll stay with my number 12 flat. Do this side, make sure that that area is dry first. Dry that side. I'm going to bring some of this soften color up between them. Okay. Reevaluate any areas that you feel need to be darker. If you feel that you're eyes could be could stand to have a little bit more burnt sienna in them you can deepen some of that now we need to do some highlighting and I'm going to do that with the white and some water let me dry that first. With my round brush, I have some water and we can 
take the watered down Snow White and I'm going to bring it in the center of his eyebrows and down a little bit on the nose. So if it looks too bright, you can go and do some mopping. You can pre-wet. You can tap it with your finger. We can soften it with a clean brush. Soften those edges. So that was not pre-wet. This will be pre-wet and you see the difference. So if we take this one I'm going to put one right where between his the two shading lines that we did. It's like the inner eyelid. And it's a thin line. I'm also going to put it around the flesh part of his eye. So maybe not everywhere, maybe just here from 9 to 12 and 6 to 3. And then let's bring a little bit down here. Do another line on top of this ear. Soften it, you can go over it with a clean brush, wipe it off. Do the same on this side. I'm going to do some on the inside of the iris. So same, maybe not so wide as 9 to 12, but somewhere in the middle. The pupils are black. Again, I'm using my four round. Try that. I want to highlight on the inside of his ear as well with a side load of white. So go against the inside here. I don't want to go over the burnt sienna, but I want to pick up where it left off. And I'm going to do the pupils. So I'm going to pre-wet, make sure they're dry. And take your 
pour around in some white and then do a little smush of color here and here. You can tap it with your finger to tone it down. Do the other side. Same area, a little smaller, so it gets wide, narrow, and narrower. Let some of that black show. Now I'm going to go with my number one liner and some black. And I'm going to pretend I'm coming out from the center and I'm going to draw a line over the iris. Try not to go too far. And so cut that in half and then you can cut it in half this way. Cut it in half that way. So you just keep cutting things in half and pretend you're coming out from the center. What's going to happen is we're going to have to go back and put that highlight over top of the black. Make sure you watch the angle of your of your line. So with a moist brush pre-wet those areas and you can soften your highlight over the black. shine on that. If you're um, some areas you feel you could benefit from adding more of the flesh tone kind of correct where you went over it with the burnt sienna go right ahead that's it so I hope you enjoyed this project my little rainbow troll, the throwback to the 70s. And if you paint it, please share a photograph with me. So again, thank you for joining in this project rainbow troll. And if you liked it, please don't forget to give me some thumbs up. Also make a comment below. I will return your message. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this with your friends, anyone who would enjoy trolls or painting. So take care until next time. Always remember to paint with heart.